What's going on everyone, and depending on the order you watch this video in, uh, it's going to decide which is the last one for you. But for me, this is the last tier list with the Assassins slash Hybrid uh, Joust tier list. Uh, but yeah, one thing I did want to make clear for this tier list is that I'm basically including gods that are either normally built hybrid uh, or is at least seen viable in Joust as Technically, every god can go hybrid. Um, so instead of doing that and making like a tier list where every god can go hybrid, because that'd be a waste of time, uh, I've decided to only put in those gods that usually go hybrid within Joust. So, um, but I've also included uh, assassins as their own tier, as you know, certain gods like Neja or Fenrir can go tank. Uh, but if I did that, the tank tier list would have like 80 more gods because all these gods can technically go tank, I guess. Um, so I decided just to do an assassin slash hybrid uh, tier list. As you'll see, like a couple of these gods can go hybrid that aren't necessarily assassins. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all I wanted to say. Again, I'm going to reiterate this for the last time, uh, depending on which order you watch these videos in, uh, how this video gets recommended to you, whatever. Uh, I am doing a different form of um, format to the tier list where I'm doing basically each individual role, whether that's your mage, hunter, uh, tank, and then finally your hybrid assassins. Your assassins slash hybrid gods is what I meant to say, because um, assassins and hybrid kind of go hand in hand in joust for the most part outside of a couple gods. Um, but yeah, instead of doing a one and done uh, tier list that I've been doing a lot of other people have been doing I thought it'd be better to do it more in depth uh, And have it split up so it's not as time-consuming and clunky and shit like that. So um, That's what I try to do. If you don't like that, please let me know if you do like it Please let me know as that what the please let me know that as well because uh, Like I said earlier in my other ones you're hearing this you're probably skipping it or whatever. I do uh, Enjoy making tier lists regardless of how I do it uh, whatever is easiest to you I'm just here for, uh, to, cause I think it's fun. So let me know. Feedback is really important for this one. So do let me know. But with that being out of the way, I actually forgot to add the extra parts here. So I'll be right back and do that actually right now. All right. And we're back. We added the, uh, extra things, um, that if you've seen throughout the video, it's the same exact thing. S is bands, A plus is great, A is good, B is subpar, and C is niche or basically bad um, for clarity's sake. But let's get into the first god. My aim is to make this 40 minutes, hopefully. Um, trying to make it as quick as possible while giving the most in-depth analysis. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, Alpwash, uh, not an assassin, but uh, can go hybrid. Um, as you can go, uh, not really the cringe mage build which i think will be i hope to god that the cringe mage build will be leaving us soon so that's my aim in this build i'm not including that for alpwash uh, alpwash can kind of go hybrid anyways before the cringe mage build so i'm incorporating that type of build um i think he with that build is pretty much the same as i think he was in the other one i think he's good here as well um as Alpwash, like I said in my other one, he he can go full damage, but he's very squishy. Um, but with your hybrid type of build with Alpwash, I think he uh, can survive longer, be super cringe, throwing out his body's healing and shit, while also doing a bunch of damage at the same time. If you've seen a lot of SPL, like Haddix uh, in the SPL, fucking took advantage of this a little back, a little while back, earlier in season in this season, season ten. Um, so. Um, Alpwash, uh, I think is a solid pick with this build. Uh, another mage here, Al Kwong. Al Kwong, I think, uh, what I put him in niche, I think he is a solid pick. I think he's good. Uh, he used to be OP as shit. You can argue maybe A+, plus, depending on how you play him. But a very hybrid build, like going into, I guess now would be Sands of Time. Um, Gauntlet, you know, Berserker Shield, uh, Shoguns, and then going like fucking, um, Cyclopean Ring and like, I don't know, this is just off the top, Cyclopean Ring into 
E staff, for example, and you can kind of burst people down as you just need to be able to get them down close enough to where you can ult, get their beads or whatever, um, or just, you know, be able to shred them, poke them with your uh, percent damage with Cyclopean and, and E staff. You can even go a little bit less tankier with like a gauntlet and then rest damage, for example. Uh, you could do that, or you could go a little bit tankier where you go gauntlet um, and then maybe shoguns and then the rest damage or berserkers and the rest damage. You know, you can do whatever the hell you want with that, depending on the team comp and how comfortable you are playing Al Kuang. Uh, but I do think that he is a very solid, good middle of the road god uh, in terms of this build in Joust, uh, rank Joust. A lot better than the niche build when going full damage as a lot of these gods will. Um, Arachne, we're going to assume that a lot of these gods are going to go the hybrid route because um, that's what I mean when I put the slash between assassin and hybrid is that although there will be gods in here that aren't assassins that can go hybrid that uh, also go can go a different build. Um, uh, most of these assassins will be going hybrid because a lot of assassins in Jalus kind of have to outside of a couple otherwise you just get literally one shot which is not good in joust you need to be able to not be one shot but also do enough damage to where you can potentially one shot them so that's usually how you're uh playing your assassins currently um but with arachne she's basically um, with her buffs and i'll give it to her i'll put it i'll put her in low subpar uh bottom of the barrel subpar i don't think she's good really at all um, but with her recent buffs to where she stuns right away with her two, um, she can kind of go the tanky route and still do damage. Um, like that one item I can't think of where you get attack speed based on what, when you heal. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys know what I'm, ta I'm talking about. Ama can go on it a lot too, um, but I, I just don't think she's that good. Um, she hasn't really backlined that great because she gets shut down by CC a lot. So she's not even good at that. Um so really you're just hoping that you can sort of get them off guard or whatever or set up for you know another person to come in and uh finish them off or you can finish them off for example so really nothing much with her um but she because of her recent buffs i'll put her up one uh Oelix, um i will also i'm gonna put her in niche because well she really hasn't gotten a buff um and then also She's literally niche. You literally only build her against gods that you know you can counter and you can fuck up. Like, if they got a Hoi, then you can uh, potentially pick a Wheelix as a counter. As you know, when she Hoi jumps up, a Wheelix can ult him and bring him to him. Uh, at least bait out the beads, for example. Um, other gods that leap as well. Um, I guess Bacchus, although he's kind of fucking tanky as hell, most likely, so you don't really want to do that. But the idea applies to any god that you think that can jump. And so normally you don't ever want to play her in Joust because she's kind of dog shit. Um, if there is someone who you can target, pick, and fuck up, like Hoi being a notable one, um, then you can definitely pick uh, a Wheelix, and that's really the only time you would play her, so that's why she's going in niche. Bacchus is also going in niche as well. Um, even more than a Wheelix, I think. She's, he's worse than a Wheelix. I don't think Baka does anything. Baka does nothing. There's no jungle for him to, to farm. I mean, you get to secure camps because he can eat the minion, but outside of that, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't really have a counter against anybody because um, he gets shut down by CC a lot, very similar to Arachne. A lot of the other attack auto-attack gods you don't normally see because they just get shut down uh, in Joust. So really nothing much to say about him don't play him he's bad he's not even like there's nothing really i can say that's like niche about him he's just bad um let's see bastet uh hmm, definitely either a plus or s um rough rough one here i think because there aren't too many s tier i'm gonna put her in, i'm gonna put her in s i'm gonna put her in low s you can argue top a plus um she's one of the gods that you can go full damage and get away with it because of how uh safe she is with her jump you jump in you throw out your two three you basically poke them uh or vice versa three two whatever whichever way you poke them out and you jump back and they're like half hit depending on how far you are into the game She's very good. A lot of assassins, I'm going to make this clear earlier in the video, a lot of assassins are very good against your double 
uh, backline team comp as they can basically shred the backline very easily without getting punished a lot. So if you ever see a traditional team comp like a Guardian Mage Hunter, you can know that secure that in your mind that if you play, if you're good at a, an assassin, um, that you can play an assassin and you'll do, you'll definitely most likely have the uh, advantage as you are basically bursting them uh, while also being a little bit safe. Uh, with having a little bit of defense, but with Bastet, her safety is in her ult, or in, his, in her one. Now, you can still go Gauntlet and rest of the damage with Bastet, but I don't think you need to if you play her correctly. So, I think Bastet is very, very good. If you're going to go up against a team comp that doesn't have a lot of mobility, like an AMC, you're going to want to make sure you ban Bastet, because that is a fucking god you do not want to fuck with if you are uh, one of those gods. So you can't really do anything about Bastet, uh, except maybe try to counterpick her with like an RDO or whatever, but at that point, you're fucking... You're handicapping yourself because RDO isn't that good, for example, right now. So I think she is bottom of the barrel S, but she's still, I mean, that's still really good. Camazots. Camazots, I think, is um, S plus. I'm sorry, not S plus, S. Um, he's probably one of the best backline gods we have because of how much sustain he has, how, how safe he is with his three in his ult, and he still has beads, for example. He just does so much poke against those backline gods. Um, again, he's not very good against a like double tank team because he doesn't do that much damage. Um, even if you build percent pen, he still doesn't do all that much. It's a lot harder for him to kill them. But for the backline, he just shreds them easily. You can jump into a tower if you have ult. You can beads, do all your damage, and then get out after you've killed them and you're still fine. You get to sustain and you can fight again. I think he is S tier. Um, he is a little bit harder to play because you do have to hit, hit your abilities. But if you are able to, you know, consistently hit your abilities, you can definitely carry games. Um, and he can definitely fuck up your backline. Or you can fuck up their backline if you're Camazots. So I think he is S+. Plus. S tier, not S+. Plus, Jesus. Uh, Kleena, I think, is... What do I think about Kleena? Nothing much because she hasn't played a lot. But I think Kleena is probably solid. Uh, she's probably just an A in my opinion. She's not really played much, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, she does have a lot of potential in ganking, going in walls and shit. She has a lot of damage. Uh, you build her gauntlet and the rest damage. She can be very safe with her dash as well. Um, so she can definitely backline the enemy uh, got enemy enemies in their backline. Uh, you can go into their blue buff, for example, and you know, fucking use your one through the wall. You can do a bunch of shit with her. Um, so yeah, I think she's a middle of the road good god. Make sure you build like you know a little bit of defense on her, like just like a gauntlet, for example. Um, but yeah, Daji I think is niche top niche though, as I think she does have some really good counter matchups, especially on gods like Thoth. Uh, any god that doesn't have a CC immune ult that also doesn't have uh, you know any um, getaway abilities. So if you're thinking you know like AMC for example. Um, who else? Marty is good. Although Marty does have a CC mean ult. So uh, AMC, Alpwash, you know, gods like that um, can definitely. But she's very good against Thoth too. So, um, But outside of that, I think she doesn't really get played much. She's not very good. Um, but I do think she is top niche in my opinion. Donza Boro. We're going to go ahead and put this in the to subpar i'm gonna put him subpar the the hybrid build where you go like gauntlet berserkers shoguns kins and whatever the fuck else or you know gauntlet and the rest damage for example i think is cheesy i don't think you can do too much with it but i still think it can have some play um, if you play it correctly, you just got to wait a little bit. You got to be patient and get your build online before you can actually start fighting a lot as uh, that's definitely when you'll do it. But again, tanks aren't really in the meta. So that also uh, doesn't make it to where hybrid is. Hybrid Donza is all that great, even though how much I fucking love hybrid Donza. Erlong Shen. I know Erlong I is basically dog shit in, as a warrior. 
uh, tank, but I think he is at least subpar with the build going hybrid. If you, you basically play Erlong like an assassin, like he always has been uh, before they nerfed him and gutted him completely with his three. Uh, but I still think he does a decent amount of damage if you play him like an assassin. If you go like gauntlet and maybe one other item tank and then go the rest of the damage fucking, you know, you know let's just say you go gauntlet, berserkers, and then the rest of the damage. You just play him like an assassin. You can have a little bit of success with him. Again, you're not going to have it like these gods up here or even an A, for example. But you can have some success. And I think he is actually better played as your assassin than, in it, than he is your warrior. Um, but he is going to be bottom of the barrel subpar. So that doesn't really mean much of anything else either. Uh, next up, we have Fenrir. I'm going to put him in A+. Plus. I don't think he's S. Um, but I do think that he does a lot more... Um, I, I still think he does a lot more than any of the other ones. He does have really good damage. Um, not top of the meta right now, as he can get countered decently. Um, and can get bursted down. But a lot of the times with him, you build him tank. You build him tanky with maybe two items, like a serrated and last item Heartseeker. While you go at the beginning of the in the game, where you go like, I don't know, Warrior's Axe, Gauntlet, um, Breastplate. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm thinking of old build. You would go Warrior's Axe, Gauntlet, um, Genji's, Pridwin, Serrated, and Heartseeker. And I think that's a pretty solid, you know, generalized build. You can interchange Gauntlet, or you can interchange Breastplate with Pridwin, but I think Pridwin's really good on on Fenrir. But, you know, got, a build like that can go a long way. You're really tanky. Uh, and also keep in mind that Fenrir's 2 gives him a fuck ton of power, even though they nerfed it. So, um, Fenrir is still very good. He does, he can have both best of both where I was being tanky as fuck while also doing damage and having pretty decent setup with his one and his ult for example having good beads burning capability so I'd say he's top A plus don't think he's S I don't think you can make an argument that he's S but I definitely think he's a very good great um better than good sorry great pick I keep saying that shit um Hades going hybrid I think uh I think he's still subpar I don't remember where I put him last time I think I put him subpar but I think I'll put him up higher subpar as if you do go hybrid um Hades I think he does a lot more than he does just full damage I don't think I don't because he's so like in your face I don't think going full damage is good for him so I think having that little bit of tankiness while also being able to dish out damage is how you're going to play him that's how he's actually played in the solo lane although in the solo lane it's a little bit different because you are 1v1ing and you're at the uh wave where you can kind of cook your build so a lot of times actually that he goes full damage like uh book of thoth and all that other good stuff um but when you're 3v3ing he's just not that great so i think like conceding the early game going a little bit hybrid and then doing damage later in the game if you want to some for some fucking reason, play Hades in rank Joust. You're gonna have to do that. Hunbats, I think, follows in the same thing in subpar. I don't think he's all that great. He does have some good counter potential, like potentially Thoth, because he can trace him down with his three. If he somehow Thoth dashes away, you can use your three to chase him down as he can TP from that. But outside of that, I don't think he's all that great. I'm gonna put him a little bit higher than a fucking Erlong, though. Um, and honestly, better than uh, Hades, in my opinion. I think he has a lot of, he has a lot of potential to kill. He does a lot of damage. He's very safe. He has a very, he's one of the best ults in the game. And yeah, I think, but I just don't think he's on that level to where he's um, like a solid pick for every game. But not enough to where he's niche to where he's like dog shit. Um, but I think he is subpar. Um, and then we have Isho hybrid. I think hybrid Isho, if you're going to go like the tanky hybrid, pure, not the cringe one I'm talking about, I think she's good. Top A, good. If you're going the tank type of like gauntlet, um, some type of healing, I don't know, Lotus Crown or some shit, or, um, psych, or uh, what, what is the item? Rod of Asclepius? Is that, that's for, I'm pretty sure that's for mages. Pretty sure that's for um not mages um magical gods i think she's good i think she's better played with the cringe and better played with the uh damage build but she's not bad she's still good because she still can go that build as she does have a lot of cc and all of her abilities and stuff like that so she can be played like a guardian as well as she has some healing and she does decent pretty pretty decent damage so um but I still think the cringe mage build and just the regular damage mage build on e-shell is better. 
Kali's going straight to mid or niche as Kali and a lot of the other AA gods just don't they're not good in joust and i don't think they ever will be unless they fucking do that because they have to be up in personal uh and you get stunned out and there's a lot of cc and joust that you're playing with so very similar to bakasura and any of the other auto attacks i'm only put her back in the above because she has a little bit more play with her buffs and shit but outside of that most of your auto attack gods your pure auto attack gods are going to be dog shit now lancelot in my opinion i think is a um, I've been talking about him a lot. I think he is a very underrated god. Now, he's still only good, as I know that he does have some downfall, a lot of downfalls. But I still think that he um, has a lot of outplay potential, has decent setup, plays similar to Achilles with his one, and has a very, very good getaway with his ult. And so I think playing him more tanky with a little bit of damage is how you should play him, and I think that's really good on him, in my opinion. So... I'm going to put him in A. I don't know if that's too spicy, but I still think Lancelot is basically played like a warrior. And I think that he's basically uh, has so many, so many abilities. I think he's a pretty solid pick in my opinion. So I'm going to put him in the middle of the road in A. Loki, I'm going to put in uh, low subpar. He's, he's almost niche because if you play him into like a specific team comp like Geb, Aphrodite, for example, where you just like focus Loki as a pure damage dealer, that's really only how you're going to get success. You need to build a team that like allows Loki to do what he does, which is fuck up the back line and then get away. And with these team comps now, I don't think you're able to do that because he just gets bursted down even if he ults. He just dies. There's too much CC. His his one's not going to be useful unless you engage first. And then that, in that point, you can't really do that. As you can just fucking... He's basically just like a two bot. You throw out your two, you damage them. Um, and then use your three occasionally on the wave. And you can't really get in close because of how much CC and damage you're going to take if you do so. So in my opinion, I don't think uh, Loki's all that great. Almost a niche in my opinion. So low subpar is where I'm going to put him. Mom and Bridget. This fucking god is so goddamn annoying, and I'm gonna put her in A because I think she is still pretty good. Uh, her kit still does so much damage. Her passive does so much fucking damage. You play her correctly with your one, spamming it, like just clicking it off, on, off, on, off. Um, she does a fuck ton of damage. Her three still does ugh, so much damage. She has a lot in her kit. Uh, that make it makes it to where it could procs her passive which does a lot of damage you build her the cringe build she does fucking exceptional uh and you build her the build that i like to go where you go gauntlet and then damage the rest after she's still very good with that as well too uh basically playing like an actual assassin uh, that she is only problem is is that she dies really quickly uh as much damage she's basically your, your epitome of a glass cannon you do damage and then you fucking die um i think it was a statistic i think she was like the the fastest the most amount of kills of any release god but also i think the most amount of deaths from any uh, re with any release god i think uh, that's just based on hearsay that i've heard but still think she is a solid god um if you go with the correct build mercury i'm gonna put top subpar because tank mercury was a menace back in the day <laughs> even though it was kind of cheesy I still think Tank Merc has some potential as he does have set up with his three. His ult is actually surprisingly decent in the Joust map. Um, and that's basically what you want him for. His autos do really good damage if you go uh, hybrid build, like you go Gauntlet, Berserker, Shoguns, and then rest damage, for example. Or if you want more damage, you can go four items damage, uh, two items tank, and you're still doing a, a lot of damage. Crit is still very good. Uh, although crit in joust for mercury isn't all that great uh, unless you let him get cooking and if you let the mercury get cooking well that's your fault uh, but i still think merc is a little bit underrated um in terms of you know all the other assassins that play similar to him as he is sort of auto attack based uh with crit uh, but i still think he's better than any of the other gods like arachne bakasura kali stuff like that uh, which says a lot um, Neja, I mean, where else? Like, I almost want to put another tier, put SS and just says Neja. Um, <coughs> I almost just fucking <coughs> I swallowed almost the fucking, I don't know what the fuck that was. Anyways, Neja, 
the best god in the game. Uh, I think literally is the best god in the game. He literally has everything. I almost called him. She. He literally almost has everything. I think he has the damage, the CC, the setup, the peel, um, the healing. Um, what else? Great cooldowns. Um, can build any build path that he wants, uh, and still do fuck tons of damage. He's a great tank. He's a great hybrid. Uh, he still does a fuck ton of damage if you go straight damage. Uh, and I don't think he's that great with it, but you can still make it work because he has so much damage. Uh, you still get one shot, but that's with any god. Uh, he just has everything. He sets up so well. He's the best god in the game, in my opinion. I don't know what else needs to be said. He gets banned every time. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, one god that I think has been coming up in the meta recently. I think Nem is a plus. I think Nem has so much potential. She has really good poke, has really good mobility with her one, has a lot of prot shred. If you let this fucking bitch cook to like level 15, 16, 17, uh, up towards to 20, and you and she ults somebody at full health like a tank, you're donezo, buddy. You're done. You're dead. You're gone. Um, she also has a very safe ability with her three. I think that... Uh, a very underrated ability in her is that she takes a bunch of damage and just heals it. And then you can go in, do more damage, auto them, auto attack cancel with your one. Um, and then if you want to go all in, you use your ult and you fuck shit up. And so I think that Nem is an underrated, very underrated. She recently got buffed, so that's why. Um, I think she still needs to go one tank item to make her work and then the rest damage. But she is a very, very good god and I'm thinking about doing a video on her soon too. Um, but very, very, very good god. Great and A+. Plus, so um pele i think pele subpar below on the average she's still below on subpar is what i mean i i don't think she does much of anything outside of instead of conquest um she's still like you can build her like tanky a little bit and then go breast damage like one gauntlet and she can still fuck shit up but she, there's so much cc in the game that she kind of gets shut down and she, since she doesn't have a reliable getaway except her ult a lot of times you're burning your ult and you're not really doing too much of anything besides poking with your one uh, as she does have to get really close and i don't think that within the get meta right now with there's so much cc she really can't get that close in my opinion <clears throat> next up we have is rat we have a really i think rat man rat is really good but i'm only gonna put him top a i think he still has some flaws as he can't really go that tank route uh, he doesn't have the amount of CC that I think he sh like as a tank should like Fenrir He has a stun in his three and like a knock up in his ult but outside of that uh, You can argue a plus and I wouldn't be mad, but um, I Still think other gods do a better job at what he does um, and that's being the tank um, If you go pure you can go damage and backline them too, and that's really good as well um, but I still think, um, you know, gods like Fenrir, Nam, and everyone else are just better than him, in my opinion. Uh, but he's still very, very good. You can backline enemy gods with your ult. In the background, you go gauntlet, rest, the, rest damage, and you can prot shred them with your two. Um, I think he's very underrated, and he doesn't get picked a lot, uh, thank God, because he actually, I think, is very underrated. Uh, and you can play him like a bruiser you can play him like a tank uh, and i still think he is very 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 good underrated as hell don't play him because i actually hate going up against him um so don't do that um ravana i think ravana is a botched version of Kamazots and bastet sort of he still works but i think other gods are better at it uh but i still think he's really good so i'm gonna put him in low a i don't think he's worthy to go in b uh, as I still think he's fucking, he still plays like a warrior, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, Ravana is really good. Um, like I said, a very similar hit to Kama. You just like very safe. You have a CC immune and Aegis basically in your two. Um, you do a lot of damage for your three and your one. You get shields and shit. You can ult away. You get even more shields. You build them like a bruiser and you just don't die and you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Um, and that's basically where he was where he is and where he actually was before he actually was top of the meta in my opinion in joust and anywhere else actually he was a disgusting menace um and it trickled down to joust but i think it's cooled down a little bit and i think that he is just a uh low a pick due to the other gods i think that are better in the meta in my opinion 
Next up, we have a Sir Cat. I think Sir Cat is a very underrated tank. I think, and this is just my opinion, I think she's low A. I think she is low A. With the amount of CC she has with her two and her ult, the amount of um the amount of mobility she has with her one and her three, I think she is extremely underrated. I think she's A plus. Um, the amount of things you can do with her um, is actually absurd. You have so much peel, you have so much setup, you have so much mobility, and she does a decent amount of damage. So basically you have it all, and I just don't know why she doesn't get played. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm assuming because there are better picks there, but like, in my opinion, I, I mean, I might start playing her more just because of that, but like she's very, very good uh, if you have uh, a team with you that you can go with. So that's also another point as well. Um, but yeah, I think she's A+, plus, and I think that might be a spicy take, but I think she's really, really fucking good. Um, next up, we have Set, recently nerfed. I would have put him in S, but I think he goes down to A+, plus with the nerfs. Um, he still one-shots with Warriors, Axe Brock, um, Gauntlet, and then rest damage. Basically, you can add in a Phalanx there, for example. I like to add Phalanx in there. Um, Set still does what he does. He won, like, he bas he's a one-shot, but he basically just cleans up shit you fucking you ult you use your three and then you just basically auto attack cancel with your two clones when you're near an enemy and they just go bye bye and so a lot of damage doesn't have a lot of setup he's very similar to like Kamazots or Bastet where he does damage in the background um but you want to build him a little bit uh tanky with a gauntlet but a lot of times uh with set you use your three, you can use your ult, and you need to make sure you count. You use those together. That makes it to where his ult procs more often, doing more damage, uh, procking more clones and stuff like that. So you can auto cancel with your two. Um, but a lot of the times, um, he's also very, very safe because you can use your two uh, and your three combo, and you can teleport like a fucking across the map, which is crazy too. His one does a lot of damage, and I think he's just a very solid, um, very solid middle of the road uh a plus tier um for assassins in my opinion here we have sun wukong and i think sun wukong actually is really good in this type of uh, assassin type hybrid build i uh, remember i put him in like low subpar for tanks he's not really a good tank but he is a very good assassin as he basically plays like one and it's exactly why he's still good in solo lane because he's still he's a damage god he's basically an assassin his one two dude does a lot of damage his three is a stun knock up or you know run eagle get away uh, and it does all a lot of damage and then his ult is just a get out of jail free card and then when you plop down you do a bunch of damage you have all your abilities back up and you just recycle everything again and you just run away very assassin like and i think he is uh very good into that i think he is top a in my opinion i don't think he's a plus but i still think if you play him like uh, an assassin hybrid god you're gonna do a lot with him uh and that's basically how you should play him in just in my opinion susano i think is underrated i but i'm still gonna put him top a top b sorry i'm losing my mind um i think susano is a very high skilling high skill ceiling god you have to you have to think about so many things like okay if i throw out my three if i'm able to use my two where i knock them up auto cancel use my three i have to wait for them to jump and then i can use my three but if they don't jump i can use my one to get more damage off or i could use my ult and this ult would be a good position a time to you know there's so many outplays so many things you have to think about that you just have to play him more often i need to play him more often because i think he's very very good once he's played at a high level uh where you're just sort of in tune with him uh, he has a lot of outplay potential against gods like thoth for example you throw a three out on him um and he dashes you can use your three to teleport to him very similar to uh like hun bats like i said earlier he has a lot of outplay potential against those gods that have like getaway abilities and you use your three on them um which means that they have to think too because if they know how susano is played uh, and they know that they have a leap or a jump or a dash they have to wait until the three stalls out to where you can't uh toggle it anymore and teleport which also means you're just standing there taking damage from susano so a lot of times it's it's a, it's a fucking chess match with susano so i think he's underrated i wouldn't i wouldn't mind seeing or arguing for a low a but i think um i think he uh is a little bit he's very underrated in my opinion Thanatos, uh, I'm going to put him in low B. I think he has some play. 
Um, but you build him like gauntlet straight damage. There's really no other way to play him. You can't really play him tank. He kind of sucks like that. Um, doesn't have a lot of setup besides his silence and his three uh, and stun in his ult. And he has a, um, sorry, and, and he fucking water. I don't have any water near me though. Um, and it's, and you have um, him having a execute. Um, but other than that, he's basically your assassin. He's trying to kill your enemies like fucking Kamazot. So he's just a really bad version of that, in my opinion. Uh, a lot more skill shots, and you have to get up really close and personal if you want to be able to burst them. Similarly to like a Kamazots with a lot less safety um, within that. Thor, I think, is top A+, plus, in my opinion. Might actually be... I think he's the best A plus god, almost borderline S. I actually wouldn't mind him being in S tier. I think he's very, very, very fucking good. You don't even need to use your ult, which is still very good in Joust, because um, you can definitely catch people off guard with that. But a lot of the times you build him like sort of, you can either build him tanky or you can build him gauntlet and the rest damage. Either way is still very good and doesn't really change where he's at in my opinion. Uh, but really all you need to do is you stun them use your one and you basically half hit them you don't even need to do anything you poke them out so hard from such a far distance while being safe because you have your ult um to get out for example if you get pressured or whatever um or you have your hammer to throw for example uh he's very safe there's a lot of poke damage um and then when he all ends he all ends he has a great setup like if you want to tower dive um let's say your tank thor um and you tower try to tower dive with your team you can tower dive them uh, stun them set up everything and you can throw your hammer out um if you've taken too much damage you can have your beads up or whatever while your team in the in the background is just fucking them up or fucking up the tower whatever he has a lot of potential to do a bunch of shit and i think that that's what makes him really good and he also has a decently high skill ceiling not like the craziest he's very pretty simple to play but a lot of the times there are abilities that um you want to think about and um a lot of times like if you throw out your one or whatever for example you will now you don't have it anymore and that was your only getaway for example so i think um in the right hands he's op as shit but either way he's very top he's very good top tier god and i think that's he's top a a plus uh suki recently got a buff um where he doesn't have he's not immune in his two uh, i don't think that makes too much of a difference but i will put him in top b very similar to Sasano. Um, he has not not very similar to Sasano. I meant similar to Sasano that he's top B. Um, like I said, he has CC or not CC. He has knockup immunity in his two, which makes him a lot better against gods like Bacchus or, for, or other gods that have knockups. So that is definitely something good. Even like a Cerberus ult, for example, you can immune that with his two. He has a lot of damage with his one. He just pokes autos and shit like that. You want to build him like um, hybrid majority of the time. You don't really want to build him tank, although you technically can. Uh, I don't think it's the right play. I think building him like a, an assassin is what you should do. A hybrid assassin, of course, going gauntlet and then straight damage like Jotun's, Hydra's, Serrated, whatever the fuck else, Heartseeker, whatever. To try to get to that back line. I just don't think he's all that great at getting to the back line. Very similar to, um, or as opposed to like Kamazots or Bastet, because they can jump in, do whatever the fuck they want to them, and then be safe. Whereas Sukiyomi, you have to ult them uh, or somehow get them out of position, which is really hard to do in Joust if they're under their tower, for example. Um, you can't really yank in Joust like, like that. Um, he doesn't have too long range, uh, too long of a range. He does have long range abilities, but not consistently like Kamazots where he can throw it out and he can jump away as Sugiyomi doesn't have a getaway uh, outside of his ult. So he is very, very, um, risky in terms of that. And so I don't think you really want to play him that much, um, when you have other gods above him that do a better job, in my opinion. And last but not least, we have Zhang Kui as your hybrid uh, and I'm not talking about the cringe mage because he did go hybrid before this, before the cringe mage. I'm talking about a mage build like Warlock Staff where he has a lot of health, um, E Staff, Breastplate. Um, you can go into like a sort of binding, stuff like that. That's the type of build I'm talking about. In that regard, I think he is subpar, very similar to um, what I think. I think I put him in either... I can't remember exactly where I put him in. I think I either put him in high B or low A, if I, if I remember right. Actually, we 
really quickly let's go back Oh, okay, I put him in A. So, okay, very similar to what I was saying earlier. Um, I, that's where I thought I put him in A, but I, didn't, I wasn't 100% sure because I did these all at one time. Um, but yeah, I think with this regular hybrid build, I don't think he's as good. Uh, I still think he's top A or top B, maybe argue low A. Um, but I think the cringe mage build is just better or just a regular mage build in general is better for him. Anyways, so I think John Quay will be top B for that. But with that that is everything that is this is the last um for me this is the last tier list for all of them um now for you if you didn't watch any others i suggest going back uh looking at all of them they should be all up at the same time so you don't have to worry about like waiting for like another tier list or whatever i'm gonna post them all at the same time so you don't have to worry too much about that but for me this is the last tier list keep in mind i did this all at in one setting so calculate all of the minutes hours whatever the fuck and put them all together that's how long i spent to make these videos so if i sound a little fucking off towards like the latter two tier list that's why um i still think i was uh, in depth enough to put them in you know the correct position uh you can argue back and forth whether or not they're in like a tier up or a tier below for example um but i think i already addressed most of those but outside of that um let's look back at this i think for the most part yeah i mean you're pretty much banning always banning neja and outside of that if you are going to ban assassins you would ban kama bastet uh, most likely thor being one maybe uh, but outside of that every other assassin you're not really banning or a uh, hybrid god in terms of this type of build so with all that being said again last time i'm going to reiterate it forever until the next time i do this uh tell me if you like this type of format tell me if you like going through each individual role for every single joust role there's only four basically um and you know making a separate more in-depth uh video on each four of these roles uh let me know if you like that more or if you want me to do just to do a straight up um one and done tier list um as I really do value guys your I do really value your guys' opinion, especially on this, because in my opinion, I want to be able to help you guys out the most. Uh, because either tier list I make makes sense to me. I already know the game at a at a very adept level, in my opinion. I'm not the best player in the world, but you know, I think I play at a, a decently high level. Um, but whether or not it makes sense uh to you is what really matters, as I love doing these tier lists anyway. So Please let me know in the comment section down below. I really value it, um, especially for these videos. So with all that being said, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any feedback or suggestions, let me know in the, sec in the comment section down below. With all that being said, thank you guys for watching.